Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are almost uh, done with your quest. Um, now that you finished those first four videos, uh, you have um, kind of a working game, not really a game, but this is kind of what you have right now. He moves and moves and moves. He turns when he hits the wall, um, and eventually he finds this ring. You are updating your number of times you hit the wall, number of steps that you've taken. Uh, of course, your position's changing because you're moving. Um, and you found a ring, and then it's kind of just done. Great. Now, um, what we want to do is we want to change this game a little bit so that we're going to make him search out several different rings. So it's not just he finds one ring and then he's done. So what we want to do is we want him to maybe have to look for several rings. Look for a ring and then find another ring and find another ring. Um, so I... I don't know. I don't know what to, why he has so many rings to find, but it works with our nested control statements. So um, just go with it. So uh, let me show you kind of what types of changes you're going to have to do to make that happen. Okay, so back in your code. Now I'm not. I'm trying to be spoiler free, so I'm not showing you really anything um, that you've done so far. But you have some basic. Um, regions of your code, like you're the region where you set up your variables. Now don't forget, I declared the variables for you. You are setting, you set them up to get him ready, like you put him in the right spot, put the ring in the right spot, made him face a certain direction, and you did a lot of setup before you started to make him repeatedly step. Um, and he's repeatedly stepping and stepping and stepping. And probably in here you have some other things nested in there, like maybe some if statements. Um, I don't mean to spoil it for you. Hopefully you already have those. Um, so hopefully you're repeatedly stepping and making decisions and repeatedly stepping and making decisions, um, drawing the world's last thing. Now this is all stuff you already have. And then you have a region that's after you're done moving. So this is the part um, where you're repeatedly moving, moving, moving. When that loop is done, you have finished your movement. And then you just say a nice thing. And this probably tells you like how many steps you had and um, whatnot. So you have these three regions set up before the movement and then after the movement. Now, here's what I want you to do. Um, I want him, I want you to f force him to find five rings and to make him find five different rings. We love all of this. We love putting, you know, like getting him ready, making him move repeatedly and telling them that they found a ring. So what we really want is we want all of that to be repeated again and again and again and we want to repeat it five times so I'm going to show you a little trick um, well spoiler alert again you're going to need a loop make sure you pick the right type of loop and now this is where things can get tricky when you're trying to deal with your curly brackets so you're going to have some kind of loop please don't type loop because there's no such thing as a loop loop right um, you've got while or for you want to open your loop up here above your setup because you this is the part that's going to put Bilbo in the middle of the screen um, make him face a random direction you definitely want you want to repeat that so once um, he's found the ring you come back up here make him start again you start your curly bracket here and then you don't want to close it until you get all the way down here after the movement um, you congratulated them on finding the ring told them how many steps it took them and so you've got this this loop up here is going to make him find five rings now um, this gets a little crazy because now your indentation is all wrong because everything in here is inside that loop sandwich so technically it should all be moved over so um, I'm going to tell you something that's top secret. If you, first of all, put your cursor right next to that curly bracket on the right, and then double click, it will highlight the entire sandwich contents. So here's all the meat that's in your sandwich. Now, top secret, I've never told a kid this ever. So congratulations. If you hold control and press I, it will just tab all that over for you so you don't have to go through and tab every line because that could get really disgusting. So now your indentation is fixed because you've got top bun, bottom bun, and then all of this, which is 
quite a hunk of sandwich is all inside the sandwich and tabbed over. Um, now if you want to, you could, sometimes I like to label what um, this curly bracket is, like what's it, what's it closing. This is in the find five rings loop. And now you are, um, you got to think about what loop you want. You've got to think about um, what flavor of loop, how many times it's going to run, how you're going to handle that, and fill in those blanks. And then um, you should be pretty good to go with one very important thing. One really important thing that I need to tell you um, is in this setup, this is weird, but this loop makes Bilbo go until the distance is small. Then it congratulates them. Then it's going to get here. It's going to make him come back, begin the process again. But the distance variable, even though you moved Bilbo, right? So this is going to put Bilbo like in the center. The distance variable still has a small number in it, and this loop will not run, right? So you you escaped this loop because distance was small. You came here, sent you back here moved Bilbo, but distance is still small and it won't let you in here. So what you really need to do um, is put something stupid large when you're setting this up. Technically you could calculate the distance again and say I'm going to calculate once you've moved Bilbo back to the middle, you can figure out what the distance is currently, but who cares? Just throw a big number in there, that big number will let you into the loop, and in that loop you're probably going to calculate that distance. Spoiler alert, hope you've already done that. Um, and then you'll be good. So don't forget how nested loops work. It's hamne, whamne, 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 hamne, whamne, 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 hamne, whamne, 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 hamne. Great. Um, awesome. So don't forget the setup is part of that loop. Now let's talk about some things that you could do. You've already done all of this. Um, if you want to reset the number of hits and number of steps, that's up to you. I don't really care. Um, I told you about control I. This is something that you probably want to do. After he's found all of the rings, you want to say, congratulations, you found all the rings. So you want another J option pane, a different one, and make sure you, so you're going to find where it needs to go in your code, but you want to do it after he's found all of the rings. And if you type in this line of code, this line of code will cause the entire program to shut down and go off your screen and be done. So, of course, you would need to put that in the right spot only after you've found all the rings and you've congratulated them. Now, um, you could extra challenge, do all sorts of stuff. You could have him um, turn by a random amount, so every time you hit a wall it could be something different if you want to. You could change your speed and or size when he hits the wall. Now the only problem is we have never used this speed variable. I made this speed variable for you. We've never used it. Um, so what you should do if you want to be able to control his speed in the game because 5 is just a constant. You can't change 5. It's always going to be the same. If you want to be able to change his speed in the game use a variable so that you could change that. Now um, so you can change your speed or size when he hits a wall if you want to do that. Now the only then you could also this is amazing. You could use a break when his speed gets to zero or his size is too small. So like when so if you're doing that and you want him to slow down or get smaller, eventually that may you may need to you. Uh, close the loop early and be like, I'm done. Get out. So you could play with a break statement if you want. You could actually ask the user where you want to place Bilbo. Um, let's see. In setup, you could ask the user how fast you want. Um, how fast you should go. In your setup, if you feel fancy, you could teleport Bilbo several times. So like when when it comes to time to start again, you could have a flash over screen a couple times and then start. Um, I don't know. Or you could decide something for yourself. You could make up, I don't know, make up an extra challenge. So these are all extra challenges you could do. Lots of random numbers, um, some user input, um, changing speed or size would be cool. Now you, and then you could even play with a break statement. But 
you can make this game your own and you can make it your own in um, however whatever way you want to um, so don't forget you need to make sure you you have some now we got tons of nesting loops inside of loops make him do it five times you could um, if you wanted to ask the user how many rings he should find so you could know how many like it wouldn't have to repeat five times you could ask him to repeat it however many times they want now I'm gonna leave you with some example syntax in case you're having some trouble don't forget you have two flavors of loop so if you need to pause on one of these two flavors of loop be really really careful loops do not get semicolons at the end of them if you put a semicolon there um, you're gonna break the entire universe so don't do that um, if you wanna see syntax for a random number or syntax for an if statement so if you need to see those feel free to pause and you are ready to complete uh, your quest for the ring good luck